you push this little slider to the left and you just slide that cover out and voila and that is beautiful symphony on top of that this is actually aluminium not cheap plastic so the quality it should last much much longer and i wish every laptop would be as easy to open toolless as this step three gather your test equipment you can need a working usb mouse you can need an earphone or headphone with a microphone you're going to need an ethernet cable and you're going to need a linux live usb in two flavors an mbr and a gpt version when buying a used laptop you should know what to look out for before during and after the purchase wherever applicable so today i'm going to give you my definitive guide on buying a used laptop like this one i bought for a household member from basic to advanced checks so you don't end up with a potato let's check it out Hey Limtax and welcome, my name is Ash from Hill My Tech. If we're meeting for the first time on this channel, I want to help you improve your relationship with tech. So click that subscribe button and ding that bell notification as well to be notified. Amazon links will be in the description below to help out the channel without costing you anything extra. Congratulations, you've decided to buy a used laptop, which makes a lot more sense for many people instead of forking out money on something which is going to be new, but not necessarily good value for your money. This guide is not going to be discussing pros and cons of buying new versus old, nor is it going to be any specific make and model of a laptop recommendation. And also the age of the laptop will not really matter. It will all depend on what you're going to be using it for. For example, my son right now is using a 10 year old plus or about 10 year old laptop from Sony. And it's working fine because all he's doing is browsing and doing studying and light office work. But of course, if you were to decide to start gaming or video editing, then that laptop is not going to cut it. The only specific advice I will give you, the main takeaway from today's video is this. Do not buy a low end cheap consumer and laptop. Instead, you should be looking for an older generation or even a couple of generations laptop from the business and models from any make and model of your choice. For brands like Dell, the Latitude and Precision lines are good. For Lenovo, you have the ThinkPad and for HP, you've got the Elite Book and the Pro version. So for today, I'm going to be using this HP EliteBook 850G1, which I bought for £135. More on that later as to why I chose this as opposed to a more recent one. Now, why business laptops is really obvious. Usually they have better quality components. You have better support, both in terms of hardware and software. They would have hopefully at some point been serviced because they would have been used for work purpose. And generally, they are much better quality components and well built and designed to last longer anyway you get a lot more value for your money. So if all you have is a budget of around £300 or $300, you should stay away from any new laptop because they're just rubbish, especially on the consumer end side. To some extent, I would even say in some cases, in some specific makes, you should stay away from under £500 or $500 laptops. Generally, there are exceptions. If you are very limited with budget, business and laptops, the older generation is where your money should be at. This guide will cover both online purchases from reputable sellers from places like eBay and Amazon, or even if you're adventurous from Gumtree and Craigslist. 1A is the serial number, but why? Here is the story. A friend of mine a while ago was trying to sell some laptops on a group that I belong to. So I got curious and was asking for the specs and it was a bit cheap. So red alert there. So after investigating and I got the serial number, I did a quick check. It turns out that these laptops were reported as stolen from a company. So I gave my friend the benefit of the doubt and after I sat with him and tried to get some more information, it turns out he had no idea. He got it from a supplier and was just trying to make some money as well. He was so shocked. So we discussed it. Eventually, I got in touch with the police, reported the whole thing. He did not get into trouble, but obviously he learned a big lesson. So that is why you try to find out the serial number. Do a quick check because you don't want really to be buying a stolen laptop. 1B, the price point, that's obvious. So I would advise you go to eBay and you ignore the buy it now options 
and you go down you browse until you select the sold listing you type in the make and model of your choice that you're trying to buy and you look at what they've actually sold for give a quick check of the conditions and general terms etc watch out for grade a b c whatever it is that will give you an idea of approximate pricing so you can use to haggle later on one c will be easily available documentation about any possible upgrades or repair or general maintenance from the manufacturer directly or if you find a manual somewhere you know very well that nowadays many modern devices are not designed to be serviceable or repairable by yourself so you want to find one which you can still have official support or at least some sort of guide that you can do your own repair upgrade or service especially for things like the ram the disc the screen the trackpad in some cases one example could be knowing exactly the maximum ram that the laptop will take because that will help you decide later on when you check physically if you see there are two dim slots and only one is occupied then you know you can just add another stick to max out the ram but if there are two ram slots and they are not maxed out then you're gonna have to remove them and replace them which is a slightly higher cost this should help in deciding to buy the laptop or not on that note for 2020 and onwards the absolute minimum specs you should be looking at is a dual core with hyper threading or equivalent from amd and average today you should be looking at 8 gigabyte of ram as an average some cases it will be a minimum with a possibility to upgrade which would be better if you find a laptop that maxes out at four gigabyte of ram from 2020 and onwards leave it alone why that's because of windows 10 recently i shared my own screenshot of my uh, task manager on windows and after disabling every startup application after uh, closing down every unnecessary background even clearing the cache from all the browsers now the computer was connected to the internet through a wired connection but nothing was happening in the background stock windows ram usage was 3.2 gigabyte of ddr4 ram obviously i have a 32 gigabyte ddr4 ram system with a ryzen 7 2700x so it doesn't really affect me just saying there are people out there who are trying to use 4 gigabyte of ram but that's really not going to happen but hey that's windows for you the only exception to this might be the processor it is becoming incredibly difficult to find a motherboard that you can actually upgrade or swap the processor which is exactly the case for this hp elite book 850 g1 but at 135 pounds with a 120 gigabyte ssd windows 10 professional activated 64 bit and uh, the fact that it had already 8 gigabyte of ram upgradable to 16 gigabyte and there was an i5 on it i wasn't going to be arguing because this is going to be only used for browsing and light office work and general task for daily stuff really so yes this has a fourth generation i5 nothing great but for what is going to be used for it is an op however if you did need a bit more horsepower a fourth generation intel processor just won't do you may want to look into a more recent one however the advice is going to be look for a minimum an i5 or equivalent if you can't swap the processor anytime soon because at some point you're going to have to swap the whole motherboard anyway if you want to upgrade and 1d for the teardown videos this is really obvious the philosophy on this channel is part ownership and part tinkering with tech so we can upskill and keep our devices for longer proper ownership for me means we should be able to do what we want with the thing that we paid with our money because we own it cuff apple hence we want to know how easy it is to disassemble tear down replace or upgrade parts so stay away from the more complicated designs dell is usually quite good with their documentation from a service repair and upgrade point of view lenovo has a huge fan base especially for the thinkpad uh, range i'm not so sure about hp support but there are plenty of video tutorials online especially on youtube this video is not sponsored and i'm not recommending a specific brand step two negotiate and don't settle on the price yet just kind of explain to them look if the pictures and the description matches then you are generally happy with the price because there's always some sort of caveat that you have to kind of negotiate and haggle down once you actually physically inspect the laptop also tell the seller that you want to take a look inside the laptop which means removing the back cover and you tell them in advance so they can prepare it for you or if you've chosen the correct make and model like in this one you should be able to get the back cover off so easily and that should not be a problem 
Think of it like buying a car. In most cases, you want to take a look under the bonnet. Even if you don't understand what's going on, you just want to pop that bonnet up. Step three, gather your test equipment. You're going to need a working USB mouse. You're going to need an earphone or headphone with a microphone. You're going to need an ethernet cable and you're going to need a Linux Live USB in two flavors, an MBR and a GPT version. If you want to know how to create one of these, check out the video above there somewhere. If so far so good, remember to subscribe and ding that bell notification icon. Step four, time for the physical inspection. Let's go. The first thing you should do is to lift the laptop and give it a little shake. And now what you're trying to do is listen for any loose debris like screws or maybe even tiny broken parts. It's not always indicative of a problem. You know, it does happen sometimes. Uh, somebody opened the laptop, changed a drive, and there's a small screw left behind. Now, potentially, yes, it could maybe fry something, but in rare cases, that's not always uh, an issue. And uh, what it could mean, though, is that the laptop was dropped, maybe, or it was wrongly opened and wrongly dismantled and wrong wrongly put back by an amateur, which means there might be some issues. So this is something you can take further after you complete your initial inspection. All right. So give it a good uh, all round view and uh, find out any problems that were not mentioned before. You could use to haggle with the seller, if any. But the beauty in this specific model and in models similar to this in any brand is the ease at which you can open the back cover. Look at this. You push this little slider to the left and you just slide that cover out and voila. And that is beautiful symphony. On top of that, this is actually aluminum, not cheap plastic. So the quality, it should last much, much longer. And I wish every laptop would be as easy to open too less as this. This is fantastic. So points for HP, whom I don't normally like usually, but I'm starting to look into their business uh, range instead. The other thing you need to also bear in mind, since we did remove the slide cover very easily, you will need a little toolkit like this. This I will put a link in the description below for Amazon Affiliate. And it's always good to have something like that. Now, don't get me wrong. No matter what kind of toolkit you will buy, you will always need to buy a very specific type for different screw and different uh, screwdriver types. Because in this one, we have some star screws and we also have some normal Phillips screws. So it's a mixed bag. It's not a major thing. I would prefer they only have one type of screws, but it is what it is, not a major problem. But the normal things you might need to quickly swap or upgrade are Phillips screws anyway. The second really good point about this specific type of laptop is you can push this slider again for the battery to the left, push this down here, and then out pops the battery and look how easy this is to just replace hint hint stupid smartphone industry take note please people i'm getting headache trying to look for a smartphone upcoming video and what we can see immediately again you know there is one ram occupying one dim slot so you could add a extra one and make this an uh, 16 gigabyte system fantastic you have the wireless card here for your Wi-Fi, you have a WWAN card for the Wide Wireless Access Network card. You also have Yipikaiye. We have a slot free for an M.2 SATA for extra storage and obviously speed if you chose to do so. Down here, you've got the drive and it is now housing a 120 gigabyte SSD. And this is the fan. And the only negative about this laptop, which was a bit of a compromise for me, is that the cooler is protecting the embedded CPU which is on this motherboard. So if you did want a better CPU in the future, this is unfortunately not upgradable. You're gonna have to remove the whole motherboard and uh, get a higher motherboard, okay? Which is why the initial advice would be at the first onset, make sure you get the highest possible processor that you can find which will avoid you replacing this whole motherboard because to get to the motherboard, this is not going to be as simple as just removing the motherboard because you have to remove the frame, etc. But still, it's still better of a design than many other laptops I've seen. Okay, so points for that. So here's a pro tip for you. If you are able to open the screen with one finger, this is a good test 
for a good hinge that's still working and obviously vice versa if you can close it with one finger do that not all laptops are created equally if you're struggling it doesn't mean it's a bad laptop it just means it's a laptop with slightly less good hinge which will probably break a lot easier obviously this is a business laptop but you will find this problem on many cheap and consumer grade laptops and in front you have the keyboard and you have the screen and i have kind of checked the tutorial on this this bezel should come off quite easily to be able to replace or upgrade the screen if i have to the keyboard also is uh, going to be accessible at the back with a screw we just have to kind of open i'm guessing but this is an educated guess at this time uh, obviously we'll need to do a bit more digging but i'm pretty confident i can work on this laptop to change the most common parts and this is why i'm recommending you go for older business laptops and check out their disassembly or teardown videos to make a decision coming obviously from a upgradable and repairable and being your own technician perspective step five start from a cold boot if the laptop was already on by the time you got there just tell the seller you want to do a cold boot and have a chat or ask questions or just maybe ask for a cup of tea hey once again like buying a car a cold boot might indicate some problems if a laptop requires several boot ups to successfully log on to windows that could indicate a problem with the disk even ram even motherboard or just a startup issue but it's not always a bad thing, it's just something for you to be able to bargain down later. But it could also mean that laptop has some serious issues which would require you to make a decision after you do the next steps. Step six is now to boot into BIOS or UEFI and note down any details like you know, hard drive, processor, RAM, etc. And also make sure there are no BIOS password set on there. And if the seller does not have the password for the BIOS, just leave it alone unless you really tech savvy and you know how to bypass the BIOS password. Step seven, it is now time to boot into Windows or whatever operating system you're testing and take a note of the boot up time. Now, if the laptop does not have an SSD, it might not be worth your time, in which case I would advise to move to step eight instead. Step number eight, after you've done some very simple checks like, you know, Windows activated and the processor and the RAM and the disk, whatever it is, head over onto YouTube and type in dead pixel test, or you can click the link below. That is gonna help you to determine any dead pixels on the screen. But watch out, that might give you some epileptic experience, so you've been warned. A dead pixel screen or dying screen or not so good screen like in this case we have a normal tin panel not IPS screen is not a major problem but again you should know whether you can easily upgrade it down the line for an IPS 1080p screen. Step number nine a video playback test online now just pop over to YouTube and type in any 1080p video like this uh, YouTube trailer from Heal My Tech and also open your resources monitor from your task manager and keep an eye out on the CPU usage, disk usage and the RAM usage. Now, if everything or some things are maxing out at 100% just from a 1080p video, that could indicate some hardware problems. Not always, it could be just, you know, there are some uh, upgrades or updates happening in the background rather, or there are some unnecessary background processors, but that would help you to make a decision. Step number 10, it is time for some stress test and benchmarking now pop over one of the browsers and type in prime 95 and download and install that bad boy while waiting for this download also look for a hardware monitor app like cpu id and that would help you to monitor things like temperature etc or you can find a few other apps once prime 95 is ready you might have to extract it just run a blend test which is going to test a mix of ram cpu and gpu and uh, the length of the test will vary between your uh, attention span and the seller's uh, patience to be honest so i would say if you are able to average five to ten minutes is a good indication again have a chat or have a cup of tea if the seller is offering but keep an eye out on your hardware monitoring info as well and there's plenty others and very discreetly or in fact just go all out just pop your ear close to the laptop and listen out for any very loud fan noises and feel the laptop's base or wherever the exhaust is 
for the air to see whether it's uh, hot or too hot to the touch. And step number 11 for today is to boot into a Linux drive. So you should always bring an MBR and a GPT version because you never know what kind of BIOS or UEFI you have on that system. In this case, we did try an MBR and it was working fine. Sometimes you may have to go into BIOS and uh, also enable the legacy and UEFI mode just so you could use any of them. And once you're into Linux, you can test for anything and everything, especially if you wanted to bypass the hard drive, which is usually quite problematic. Problematic. There you can just go on a browser, Firefox, and just test for the media, test for connection. And if you haven't done it before, use your Ethernet cable at this stage to also test for the correct working of the Ethernet port and test whatever the heck you want. And then that would help you to make a final decision because you might actually want to put Linux on there, especially if the resources were quite... Uh, problematic or quite limited you may want to put a very light distro like linux mint xfce to make good use of the laptop especially on older models and older generation laptops and that's it time to make a decision do you want to buy it haggle down or if you got it from online return to the seller hopefully who has a very good return warranty if your test was not satisfactory so conclusion time if you have a limited budget, look for a business order generation laptop. Do not buy a cheap and low end consumer end laptop, especially under the 300 pounds, $300 mark, or even in some cases under 500 pounds or $500 mark. There are exceptions, of course. A laptop may not always be your de facto choice. If you just need a computer, think about building a desktop, even a used one. If space and mobility is a problem, that's when you should think about the older business laptop. In which case, a 14 inch IPS 1080p screen size from any make and model should do the trick. In my seven years of tech repair, I have not yet come across a laptop that I want to part my cash for because i just hate laptops generally now i have a good thing going on here i don't work outside most of the time i'm not very mobile so i don't need a laptop but i understand those who need mobility but soon enough i will because i am starting to outreach a bit more so i will do exactly the same steps i've outlined in this video for my own laptop this one that we just saw is a household member's laptop for their studies and I'm going to be the technician, the repair guy, the maintenance and the upgrade person for it. So I wanted to make sure that my job is going to be easy and I've worked on enough laptops to know that most laptops, especially at a low price point, are not worth the time and effort to service, repair or upgrade. So let me know if you are considering buying a used laptop in the near future and have I managed to convince you to only look at old business and model laptops from now on. And these videos on your screen should help you improve your relationship with tech. And do not forget my Amazon affiliate links in the description below without costing you anything extra. And I will see you in the next one. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Peace out.